Joshua Hinlin here at Brickvention in Australia, and I am really happy that we have several talented builders with us who are going to take us through the whole great ball contraption loop here. We'll start to start with the bridge. Um, this is a, uh, a standard bridge that, uh, that you know, the, it, it's become the mechanism to, to allow us to uh, to walk through. Some of us are getting too old to keep bending down below the... Uh, oh, it's a very important uh, part of the layout. That's exactly right. So <laughs> we've actually got three bridges here this year. Um, this one here was uh, was designed by um, by Rowan. Um, it's, it features the uh, the, the new Saturn V uh, as uh, with the uh, with the, the, the down channel for the um, uh, for the for the bridge as a um, as a launch tower. So that uh, that comes out into uh, into a, a, a Catarata stepper. Uh, who was that designed? Who's oh, I'm not sure. They've been around for a few years now, so fairly standard. Um, the next one here is the um, uh, Hailfire Loops, so these are based on the Hailfire wheels. I happen to have four of them and decided to uh, use them all. It's been a temperamental module but uses a standard Akiyuki feeder at the bottom. And they're all actually driven by old 1960 Samsonite wheels. They're the only gears that actually mesh with the outside of the rings here. Um, brick separator, just to use them up. Uh, and that goes down into a little stepper and then off into the train, uh, built by Alan. Yeah. Hi, I'm Alan from Brisbane, Brisbrick's uh, LEGO user group. And real quick, I want to give a shout out to the sweet iHeartGBC uh, merch here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> there you go. You got the logo on the back. So I, yeah. I love that. I'm, no, uh, thank you so much. It no, looks great. No worries. Yeah, I saw it on your website as soon as you launched it. And I just I had, to, had to buy that. I love, the, I love the balls that actually use LEGO balls in the heart. That's a fantastic touch and I just love it. So I had to wear that for today. Yeah, so this stepper module here is mine. Um, a lot of people like the uh, idea of that module because um, a lot of dads come in and say, hey, that's how an internal combustion engine works. You can see the, the, the crankshaft going there, so a lot of people like that. The next we're going on to here is an Akiyuki mod, uh, loader module. This is his train version two. He, he, uh, a few years ago, he had a version one. This is a far more reliable version um, that uses uh, cogs and uh, springs to, uh, to activate. This is a completely mechanical um, module. A lot of people go, hey, how does the computer time all this? And it's actually a completely mechanically driven um, module. So what happens is there's just a train, it's, it's on its way. It'll come into the station, it'll load the balls, and then the timer will release a spring. Now, here comes the train now. So there we go, it's just loaded. And now if you look here, it does a changeover with the other module at the passing station here and then the next train comes along. So we've got actually two trains going on the track at the same time here which it helps with ball throughput. Mm -hmm. Alright, it can run on one but it can also run on two. Alright, so eventually that, that that's, um, sometimes it'll work. Hang on, just slight technical problem here. Okay, we'll fix that. Okay, so he's, and we've had a crash. It's okay. It's I'm, like I'm pretty a, sure it's supposed to switch tracks there. You know what? It's GBC. If something doesn't <laughs> fail, you're not doing it right. There you go. Couple you can of, get that. A couple of fixes on the fly. It's all good. All right, so anyhow, while we fix this here, the train's going to keep on going. And as you can see, we can fix these things on the fly, no problem. Hopefully this one will work and not make a fool of me. There we go. So this is the um, rot rotary dumper. Uh, it's If you've ever seen uh, coal trains or iron ore trains, that's actually how they actually unload the train. It rotates the entire carriage. Again, um, the train module is completely uh, powered. These modules are completely passive. Um, and so the train will come in and it actually drives the elevator up. So it's kind of pulling yourself up by your, your shoelaces here. As you can see, it goes up, and when it hits the top, it knows to keep going. And it'll go in, and it times it for one 360-degree loop. So the elevator here is an Akiyuki elevator. 
the rotatory model here is based on an Akiyuki module. However, it was being um, enhanced by um, Doug72 on Eurobrick forums. He's actually done a uh, alternative uh, build. It's still to the spec. It works with the Akiyuki modules, but it's far more reliable, and that module has actually been quite reliable. I've actually got a switcher here. I wasn't sure if this is going to be a reliable module, so I just put in a switch here, so I've actually got the option of actually unloading it two different ways, which is great with the train track. And if you're doing a GBC, this is just a tip to anyone doing a GBC and you've got train track, it's very flexible in its length, right? If you need to pad it out, you can make the track longer, or if you need to shrink it, it's good to, to, to be a, a flexible module. And so, yeah. So I had to pack all this in the plane, uh, on the luggage. It did not survive, but I was able to rebuild it all. And so here it is today. I'm in Melbourne. It's great to, great to be here to show all these people here at, at Brickvention. So now we're going to go on to module here by Rowan. Yep. Uh, my name's Rowan. Uh, I've been building uh, GBCs for about four or five years now, uh, mostly here at Brickvention, but I've done a few other displays as well. Uh, quick shout out to uh, Matt Norman, uh, great ball pit. Uh, I'm on his Discord channel and we chat a lot to all the guys there and we, we work out things and we share ideas and stuff. It works really well. So, any other GBCs out there want to join up? Um, this is my Queen's Tower slash volcano. It's a basic ball pump up the side uh, with a bit of decoration on the side. Uh, it's fun doing mechanical things but it's also fun doing creative stuff um, it's always nice and we know what draws the crowds after a while so uh, comes sort of up the vol volcano there and rolls back down uh, like so many modules you'll build it once and then realize it doesn't work so this has had a complete tear down and rebuild since the last show because it was just jamming all the time uh, this one was a small idea I saw on um, the YouTube Sam Frierson I believe uh, he built a single one and I thought it was great so um, yeah it's great to turn it into a slightly bigger module basic philo stepper there, uh, another I think that was a brick wheel module and uh, this one we call the the ball spitter or the wipeout which uses a train motor to accelerate the balls. Uh, my son here helped come up with the idea and it mostly works. I uh, love watching them whip around the it loop is, there. And it's a bit of a, 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 a risk so sometimes it'll do it 10, 20 times in a row no problems at all and then you'll sit and watch it and it'll just drop balls left right and centre so I've, I've got to come up with a better idea so they don't go all over the place but it's fun and it, things like this, even when they do break down, it's fun to see the, 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 the crowd cheer or go, oh, when they, um, when they see balls go all over the place. Basic green wall, uh, wheel here, um, then leading on to a spiral curves, which surprisingly has been a very popular module. I love seeing people watching this. I think it's a fairly basic module, but it works reliably. Um, no major issues with it. Uh, this is my mountain, which I've had for about three years now. It um, uh, was, at the time, my largest module. Um, it just kind of got built organically. I started at the bottom. I wanted a mountain with balls coming through it. So a cave comes in the side there. Uh, there's a little Gandalf's door at the bottom there. Here, Gandalf will open and uh, come and close. And a bit to the uh, on the other side here, a monster comes in and out. It's I really love these highly decorated modules like yeah. this because it's functional and yet still looks really this. nice. And the whole top just comes off so you can reveal the Yeti going around there with his icy pole. Uh, they're not working at the moment but the little horses are meant to sort of rock back and forth when the balls go past but I'll have to look into that. If I can get this back on. But this has done three years and I'm uh, sometimes with these larger models you get a bit sick of uh, storing them for the off season so I'm going to be tearing this down soon after. Uh, leading on to a tilted landscape, which uses the old soccer um, pitch uh, pieces. Just rocks around randomly and, and generally works very well. A lot of people love watching it. Uh, then leading on to a Buzz Lightyear conveyor. So, a bit of fun here. Uh, he's not picking up. Buzz's head should be going back and forth. Using some of the very old uh, Technic wheels in there as well. And about here, I think we'll lead on to Graham again. Kata, who's got some of his modules. Hey, how you doing? Uh, okay, so uh, my uh, my modules start here at the uh, at the the lime wheel here. Um, this is just one of the uh, one of the big wheels that came in some of the um, some of the Exo Force sets. Uh, so I've kind of turned that into a uh, into a wheel. Um, this module here is um, is, a, is designed around um, uh, a cardan lift gear, which uh, translates uh, rotary movement into a into a, uh, a linear movement. Uh, my son actually built this one. He's 12. Uh, sort of put it together from uh, from instructions that we downloaded from the yeah. net. Um, and that's that, this is a great little model. Yeah, this this always uh, 
you, you get a lot of the, uh, the the dads sort of bringing their their kids around, sort of say, hey, you know, this is great. Uh, you know, they, uh, and you'll find out they're, uh, they're engineers. So I always make the joke, this is what happens when you, or GBCs is what happens when you let engineers play with Lego. So, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's always impressive. Um, this one here, the green machine, um, again, the mechanism is built on, a, uh, on a, an Akiyuki module, um, uh, the, the pick and place, um, uh, or, or uh, catch and release. Uh, I, I built this one with um, with six arms, um, and when, when it's running at uh, at full speed as it as it is now, uh, th this is always impressive as well. This is a uh, this is always a fan favourite. Um, we move on to this one here. This is a uh, I believe this is a Philo module. Um, the, uh, the built on uh, four bars um that i've kind of turned called the, the the raptor cage and given it a uh, a jurassic world theme <laughs> yeah uh this one here is one of the uh, one of the brick world modules um that uh, that my my daughter built at um, at bruce bricks when we were up there uh, in september last year uh moving on this is a uh, a, um, uh, a mako uh, a mako stepper module that my younger daughter built she was she was eight at the time that she built that uh, this one my, my kids all put together and, and uh, I, I asked, this is a, 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 once again a, a module that we got the, uh, the instructions off the internet and um, I asked the kids what, uh, you know, what, what colours they wanted to, to, to build it and uh, the colours they chose just happened to be the same colours as the Google module, so, oh, the Google logo, so, uh, so I call this one a little Google. That's great that you can build as a family, you know, you yeah, get the kids in, right, all involved. Right. That's right, my, my kids are all sort of into the... Uh, uh, into the, uh, the the GBCs. I've got my daughter here with me. Uh, she came down. I'm from Sydney, so we, we drove down from uh, uh, from Sydney to Melbourne just for the, just for Brickvention. Uh, this guy here, I've I've literally half an hour taken or ten minutes ago taken taken out because I seem to have blown a motor. It's a, uh, well, once again it's a Philo module just uh, built on uh, built on one of the sweepers. Um, this guy here. Um, it uses the um, uses the wheels from um, from the bucket wheel excavator that uh, that came out a couple of years ago. Um, this this guy here uh, I've called Demon Road. We've got a we've got a little skull on the front there, moving backwards and forwards. Uh, this guy I built uh, in 2017, literally while I was sitting here at the uh, at the the Great Ball contraption. Uh, sort of between uh, be between sort of wandering around and, and you know talking to people and and uh, and whatever so th this is this is one of my own design uh, I'll throw some balls in it for you it um, just uh, we've got a set of linkages here that, that lift the road up and they uh, and they all move down you got that uh, you got that nice clattering noise that uh, that, that GBCs do um, the, the, the next, uh, the next set of modules here, you uh, you actually featured. Um, uh, they they went to uh, Brickworld in Chicago a couple of years ago, um, or no, Brick Fair, Brick Fair in Virginia. Uh, these were built by uh, by Owen, who is a, a Canberra builder, um, and they're uh, they're 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 all powered from from one motor. This this guy here's got the uh, got the Technic uh, Power Functions XL motor in between. And if you can get a shot across the back here, you can see that the whole, the whole one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight modules are uh, are all powered from the, the one motor, just with one common drive axle. So, uh, Owen put those together. Um, <laughs> this guy here um, is is Owen's infamous slow conveyor. <laughs> it's it's probably the most frustrating module on the circuit. For exactly that reason, it's just so slow, but it's it's reliable and it and it helps to regulate the uh, the balls that come through, you know, sort of, so that you know we, we, we don't get it if we if we have a breakdown, we don't get a batch of them all sort of come through and flood the flood the modules that are upstream. Uh, we've got a, another little uh, wheel here that was uh, that was built by uh, by Rassica that feeds onto uh, his bridge. This is uh, this was built for. Uh, uh, for Brickvention this year, um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the bricks um, came from the uh, the log bulk uh, log bulk order. Um, it's good good uh, black pillars and frames. That's right. That's right. Lots of lots of standard sort of technic stuff. Uh, and, and again, this because we've got so many modules here, 
um, spread out as, over such a wide area. It's good that we've got sort of two or three exits that uh, that we can get out of. All right, well, we'll move on. This is uh, this is another uh, another brick world module that was uh, um, that was built. Um, these are uh, these are Rowan's. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back to. I'll hand you back over to Rowan because these are his modules. He can talk you through his own. This is a fairly new one. Came out a couple of months ago called Cradle Tipper. Um, so far, it seems pretty good. It's a little bit jerky. I'll have to look into that. But other than that, it's a good, reliable module so far. An old Mako scoop, which my son here uh, helped build. He's eight and a half years old, and as good, we wanted to do a bit of rainbow colours there. Uh, Matt Norman, great ball pit, designed this separation anxiety only a few weeks ago, and I saw it. That oh, I reckon I can build that just in time for Brickvention here. Uh, had Make use of all those brick, yeah, separators. brick separators. I want to get a teal one to put in there as a different colour, one of the new ones, but uh, use some of my old parts. Did have to modify the output, but so far, Matt, it's been working really well. Uh, no problems at all. Uh, I made a bit of a fun start and finish in the same location. Just a, We always get asked, where does it start, where does it finish, and it's nice just to be able to point someone to a sign for a bit of fun. Um, a long arm pusher here, very common design. Uh, my, my own design for this one, we, I will often just get an idea off the internet and just go through and then uh, build it from that with my own uh, whatever parts I have. Yep, yep, already pointed that out. Uh, Akiyuki basketball shooter by uh, one of our Adelaide builders, he brought that along. It's a bit of hit and miss, not many three-pointers this time, but it's definitely in it for the crowds. It's, it's great to see people loving to watch this. Um, a, a whole family was watching a single soccer ball and it took about five minutes and it... They stayed here the whole time watching it, and uh, huge cheer when it finally got it in. This one's called the uh, steering cup module. Um, I've had to go through and re-engineer the whole gear train on it because it was the original designers one was a bit over overkill, um, and I had to simplify it a bit. But now it's been running quite well. Leading on to Akiyuki's Planets, which has been a very well-behaved module. Some of the Akiyuki ones can be amazing to watch. Um, but can be a little bit uh, finicky to uh, keep running, but this has been quite smooth. Uh, the carousel's my own design. I've seen an idea of this off the internet, but uh, just decided to build it myself, and it's done about two or three shows now. No major issues at all. Uh, just takes balls up the middle on a conveyor, dumps them into the ring, and they just roll around until eventually uh, the little paddle here pushes them down the holes that go around. Uh, leading to Akiyuki's Cup to Cup version 2. This is a delicate module, um, a bit of too much bumping and it can drop balls. Um, but again, I think we've got it running well now. I had to modify the top cup and it's uh, a little bit happier now. This is one that I, uh, the next one called the Egg Process Machine by a builder in Japan. I can't remember his name. Um, it was an amazing thing when it appeared about a year and a half ago. And myself and Alan and a couple of other builders around the world decided to reverse engineer it. And uh, we did, met oh geez, <laughs> perfect. It has not done that all weekend. Of course you're filming, the magic camera makes things happen. Uh, and it's been quite good. However, I decided to put the, uh, a stronger frame at the bottom and it's been a lot better. Um, a lot less issues with it, uh, breaking timing. It uses the minifig uh, safari helmets okay, to pick up I was up just going to ask, yeah, that's such an amazing piece, the way it's able to do that. They're just sitting loose here, and if you get them aligned perfectly and the timing is just right, it picks up the ball perfectly every time and drops it off. Uh, and it's a fun one to watch. Torso's card and lift. This was pretty much a build straight off the instructions, uh, but it's a very intricate module, very reliable. It's a good build. Uh, people love watching all the gears on here. The next two are a module by a builder in Brisbane, Rickfield, and um, he put the instructions up along with a couple of others uh, just recently, and they've been quite good using the new banana gears from the big Technic crane. They're nicely decorated as well. Yeah, this is what we should mention the banana gears have been an excellent addition to for GBC Workshop. You'll see a lot of uh, modules here now use the banana gear, and uh, ever since it came out in the bucket wheel excavator and now it's in black, uh, it's, it's, it's invaluable for GBC modules. Yeah. Fantastic. It's always good to get new parts that you can do yeah. cool stuff with. These two were actually built by uh, about an eight-year-old boy. Um, so he loves Minecraft, and he was able to build these in and, and build them to the instructions all by himself, and he's, he's done a really good job, and they've been holding up mostly all weekend. Akiyuki Tilted Rotors, uh, another one many years ago. I, when it first came out, I started to try to reverse engineer it, but uh, gave up. Uh, in the end, I think Blackbird and a few of the others came up with the uh, instructions and I rebuilt mine and 
it's a bit of a, a finicky module. It can drop balls. I think it's one of these modules which are very dependent on the tables being perfectly flat. And we have these plastic tables under here and they tend to bow and have a bit of a curve in them and that can really affect modules. You'll have one working perfectly at home on the kitchen table and you bring it along and it, and it misbehaves. Um, we're almost tempted to bring our own hard uh, tables that might fix that. Uh, another builder, new builder here. Um, this was Joel, I believe, just here, and he's built his um, uh, conveyor belt. And as a first-time builder, he's done a really good job. And this one uh, behaves itself. It's a simple module, but it's always fun to watch the balls go through. Um, Akiyuki strain wave. I think this one is. And um, yeah, it's a good module. It's it's intricate to watch. Uh, a lot of work goes involved in keeping it running, though. Uh, I think this might have already killed one motor in the last day so it can be an expensive module but it's an expensive hobby and we just sort of accept that yeah. I'll just point out uh, Graham Catter's little um, return bucket using the old hockey um, bowl pieces and they're great because when uh, the general public finds a ball they can just drop it in the, in the big scoop here it goes down the drain pipe and um, back into the circuit it's a convenient like bucket deposit there. That's that's right. It's 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 good for getting a bit of engagement with the uh, with the you know kids come along. Excuse me, I found a ball. Great, drop it in the ball. You know, uh, and uh, and and I usually say to them, you know, see if you can make it spin around the bucket. And they, they sort of sit there trying to flick the ball to make it go around and around, and um, and they go back into the uh, back into the circuit. So yeah, they they, they worked out really well. And, and we got the, got the little signs there made up as well. So. That's such a good example of what makes the GBC so great is that interaction with the public. You know, That's the fact exactly that they can right. watch it and figure out how it goes and everything. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I mean, the, the GBC is always a, uh, a is a fan favourite when with the people that come around. Yeah. You know, um, I've uh, I've done uh, I've actually done the G GBC circuit of five cities this year, and um, and in Sydney and in Adelaide we won the People's Choice Award. So yeah, fantastic. For, for Thank you. Yeah, with the distance, I mean, uh, we, we've got several thousand kilometres, you know, quite a few thousand miles apart from each other, yet we're still able to come together thanks to the GBC standard and build together. And, um, you know, the internet's great for that, being able to share ideas and people will put up a video of how their module's going and we can give ideas and suggestions. But, um, yeah, it's great when we can get together at big shows like this. It, it's really good. A couple of other Akiyuki modules by the same builder, James. Uh, the pinball, which is nice and simple, crowd pleaser. Zigzag lift. This is a very hard module to get running smoothly. It does jam a lot. I built it once and got frustrated with it and tore it apart. I'll never build it again. But this is working about 80% of the time, so we're keeping it in the circuit for now. The six heads dragon uh, goes through, picks up balls, flings them over. Standard Akiyuki build there. Another one from Rickfield, the same as the uh, Minecraft ones, but this is his Batman theme one which I built. Uh, and the next we have by our um, uh, Brooks family here, and this is a family of four who build their own modules pretty much with all their own ideas. They don't follow the instructions very well, which is great because they come up with these um, great things which are unlike anything else that anyone builds here. The kids love decorating them. They've got things like an interesting loop. Here's Joe here. Do you want to have a talk? No, you're not on the camera. That's fine. Um, and, and they're learning as they go. So the kids and the grown-ups, uh, you know, they love building this stuff. So they learn the tricks and they've come back two or three years now and every time their modules get better and better. Uh, not perfect, but no one's ever is. They've got their JK Brickwork style or Josh David lawnmower uh, sculpture done in slight Australian uh, football theme colours on the guys. Um, and, yeah, a few other conveyors and ball pumps and pushers and things like that. Um, they often look very rickety, but they do hold up for the whole weekend, which is all we ask for with the GBC. Um, some more pushers and sliders, and they've done a, a custom boat model using a very old tugboat piece, which is uh, one of my childhood boats. I saved up my pocket money and built that for about $20, and I thought it was so good, and it was still a much-loved ship, but uh, they've incorporated that into the layout as the waves go past. A few more conveyors, uh, pushers jams that forever happen. Uh, again, Owen from Canberra has uh, supplied him. Uh, Graham came and picked up the conveyor on the way down and this is great. It was just so modular that it, we were able to build this in about five, ten minutes or so. He's colour coded certain sections of it. We're able to get it together. It's got about six metres of track in here. Um, and yeah. 
Yeah, he took this to the US, did he? Yep. He took this so in his luggage to the US. Uh, to the US. It's been a very international module, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So this one did brick fair in uh, in Virginia as well. So yeah. So. It's very, it's very wide, like it leaves lots of space here. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's great. That's yeah. That's that's awesome. So that uh, so that you know we, we can sort of walk through and and uh, and bring you know bring bring stuff through, bring new modules or whatever, um, and uh, and sort of get in and out between the uh, between the the, uh, the displays. So yeah, we've got about 106 modules here working at the moment, and personally, I think that's about the limit I'd like to work with. It's just it too much of a workload. Um, you're on the modules all the time, non-stop from uh, when the gate, the doors open to closing time and it's just a lot of work so yeah, it's, it's hard work but you do see the, the smiles on the crowd going round. Uh, after Owen's um, bridge we've got a basic conveyor which I've built and uh, put some in digital instructions up that I know a few other people have built and um, it works well as a beginner module using all studless pieces. Um, and then leading on to is a Mako design stepper which I've linked five of them together. Uh, with a custom flexible joiner between them. So these, even on the fly, can be flexed and moved around if we need to adjust a layout. They're sort of universal joints going between them all. Um, and they run really well, very basic little things. Leading on to another wheel spinner and a couple of conveyors and a very original idea by James here, who's uh, come in for a first time builder and done a really good job with this one. It's a nice module, it's just, it goes around with the big sun gear going round and the balls go for a ride around the conveyor. And then when they get to a certain sweet spot, the conveyor opens up and releases the balls to the next section. Um, a bit of fun with a few balls hiding away inside there. They tend to get jammed a little bit, but that's first version. And I can't wait to see the second version as he improves it as time goes on. It can only get better. Um, it's, it's only on days like this where you can only test so much at home. It's when you bring it to big right. shows like this, you really get to see. Put it through the intense training. Really intense training. <laughs> there. There's more than boot camp. This is the, this is the real battle. We're fighting the battle all day long, and um, and we all get to know the modules. We actually, it was I think it was a bit beneficial uh, yesterday. We did a walk around with all of us, and all of us pointed out the faults in all of our modules, and say, okay, if I'm away having lunch and you, my module breaks down, this is what you have to look for. Look for this gear, look for this axle, and look for this. And it's really helped a lot because I know that if this has a problem, I know exactly where to go, and I don't waste time with someone else's modules and being a bit afraid of it because you know we all build modules that are quite delicate. And it's like, don't touch that one piece because you'll break it. Yeah. Uh, but we all know roughly how all our modules work and now. I think to, to work in GBC, you kind of have to have that teamwork-oriented yeah. mindset where, I mean, if everybody just stuck to themselves, well, then they'd be constantly breaking down. And you, and you can't do that. You've got to be helping each other out. You've got to be aware of everyone. You've got to be listening, having a really good ear for, am I hearing a jamming sound three modules away? Why is there no balls here? Why is it quiet? <laughs> okay, it's too quiet. <laughs> There must be something going wrong. Or you listen for the crowd, and sometimes you'll hear the crowd go, whoa, and you go, oh, okay, I know something's happened something there. It's exploded. <laughs> and that can be entertaining, but a little bit frustrating, but it's all part of the fun, and we do have a good time here, and uh, yeah, it's great work. Then if we keep going down? Yeah, this is Rasika's modules again, so I'll hand over to him. Okay. Uh, so this is one of my um, modules, which, has, uh, which was built in the second year, but um, uh, originally from my first year, so this is the seventh year, um, like the second incarnation of it um, is going through in here. So it's one of the oldest modules, more reliable ones uh, that I have built. Um, like um, you can see the the beautiful rainbow colors, which um, some people um, uh, have asked me to rebuild it in a color theme, color thing. But I just want to keep them in uh, the rainbow colors just to show people that you don't really need to have color coded modules going in. Um, you might have seen the, the spiral which is on the down uh, on the bridge in there which was again uh, one of my first uh, modules that um, that was um, uh, it was I think three tiers high when I started um, but it has now gone up to about four or five tiers so it keeps on going up and down depending on where I need to um, end it up. Um, the next one is another one which I built uh, but it was uh, I can't remember the name of the builder but it was um, the instructions were uh, there. It's been uh, pretty reliable. Uh, the second year it's coming up. Uh, next to it is my son's um, Chima themed one. Always a good favorite given that Chima is no longer um, available and um, like it's a discontinued theme. Um, he was a very uh, very disappointed kid when Chima was stopped but um, he's kept all of his um, Chima uh, figurines and um, 
Um, it's done a couple of uh, brick pension uh, and a couple of conventions. So it's, uh, I think uh, it's probably doing its third or fourth year. Um, next to it is my daughter's um, elf themed one. Um, she's sitting right next to it. Um, um, an elf themed uh, mountain. Uh, so I think it's again doing its second or third year. Um, like uh, we just incorporated a couple of um, elf themed uh, yeah. modules. Uh, put in a bit of action with the Pegasus going up and down as the bulls go in. Um, the bulls going through the um, the uh, water fountains and the, the things in there. We tried to get it through the slides, um, but um, really didn't get the the, the, uh, the geometry right mm -hmm. to get that one in. Um, but the uh, pop of color is really nice here. You know, you get yeah, those this, different uh, different colors with elves that you don't normally see. Yeah, um, the only thing it's missing is the elves in there, so we call it the elves hideout because all the elves have gone off. They're in the mountain. <laughs> yeah, in the mountain somewhere, but uh, not here. Um, so this one's a pink cascade, which again has been um, like uh, been built on and off. Um, like uh, had a lot of modifications, um, done a lot in there. Uh, next one is one of my stick rivers. Um, you might have seen one earlier as well. Um, so this one I had to put in a few uh, side. Uh, barriers just to keep like because the the pin cascade the only problem which uh, you have is uh, as the bows go down they hit the pins and they just bounce off uh, from the thing so I need to have a bit more um, guards just to keep the bows in. Uh, next one is another um, like a standard um, wheel which my son built. Um, this one is um, probably the one of the oldest ones again like uh, from my original uh, like a seven year old one. Um, it's had a few um, like rebuilds, like the arms kept on coming off uh, in the past. Like the the most uh, the annoying part was when the uh, the arms come off. Um, like you have to stop it and then rebuild the whole thing. Uh, but eventually, I have uh, figured out how to lock everything in. So it's now um, like I don't think I have had the um, the arms coming off uh, in a couple of years. So I have like basically big build the whole whole set of arms. Uh, they are locked in and they don't uh, like easily come off. Um, after that, um, another couple of years old, um, so it's got this uh, small um, an Archimedes crew again, uh, which has again done, like has had a few rebuilds. Um, um, it's the last few years it has behaved well, um, not that much, uh, but a problem, um, just need to get that piece a little bit more secured. I'm just waiting on a a special piece to just keep that um, orange tooth uh, in the correct place. Uh, next one is one of these uh, pin uh, slides again. Um, I think one of my original modules, um, originally it was just two sections. I have uh, since then uh, moved it um, to be um, um, three stages. Um, so obviously when you put it into three stages, it's uh, got a bit of screen going in. Um, so you can see like uh, <laughs> after a while they don't sync up so just need to get a little bit of like doesn't like a lot of bows coming in there. Just a, l a little a human push every once yeah, in a while. So, <laughs> like usually that's what happens when you have uh, something breaking up uh, upstream and then suddenly you get a whole burst of bows coming in. Um, some of the modules don't really um, handle them so this is one of the things uh, which um, usually starts um, uh, pushing them off. Yeah. Uh, another yeah, uh, another spinning wheel um, that my daughter built. Um, so my daughter and son, um, like they basically had a competition of between each other, trying to build the same modules. Uh, who could build it first and who could build it? Some the friends, piece. some family rivalry there. <laughs> yes. Um, and this next one is another new one which I built. So it's based on the Philo Pusher, uh, which is one of the oldest uh, GBC modules. What I did was basically use the uh, the banana gears from the um, the uh, bucket wheel excavator as the the sports ram, like the the original mm -hmm. pilot pusher uses the sports rams, uh, which I haven't got hold of yet, um, although they are uh, readily available. But I haven't uh, got hold of anyone anything yet. And then I thought, like, what I can use the, for the um, the ramps in there. So I thought, okay, the banana gears work very well. Uh, it's been doing well. Um, like uh, this is the first year I've got that one in. Uh, then we have got a couple of new modules with a new builder this year. So um, James here is from Canberra and uh, he has been um, stalking around the GBCs for a couple of years. His parents uh, uh, have uh, uh, got builds around here, uh, but he has been going around and he has been asking a lot about the GBCs and uh, he wanted to build something. Uh, so we got him um, involved with like looking after the things in there and then this year he has finally made Sure, uh, like um, I think he has uh, got some uh, school projects. So, James, you want to take the uh, same thing about your ones? 
Yeah, so uh, for my year 10 project, we have a project at our school, I've decided to stop walking around these uh, GBC modules and actually build my own for once. Uh, so I decided to build a Lego cannon and a uh, pinball machine. And yeah, that's so amazing. So talk about the cannon here and how, what's the mechanism that shoots it out there? Uh, well, inside the cannon, there's this rubber wheel that spins really fast, and that basically just flicks the uh, balls really fast at the collection area. And the, the net kind of slows it down. Uh, yeah, the net absorbs some of the impact. And then what's this one next to it? Um, the one next to that is a pinball machine. So that's being run by a small motor underneath and it just flicks the balls up and when, once you lose or go down the middle, it just continues on to the next module. This is awesome. This is one of my, my favorite GBC modules I've ever seen. It's so cool that the fact that you can incorporate it within the great ball contraption but also have the playability of the pinball machine and all the different elements you added in there. So what's kind of the, the mechanics like underneath this to keep that running? Uh, well, there's uh, quite a few gears, but um, they are just arms, lots of gears, arms connected to the flippers. Yeah, that's pretty hard to explain. You've got kind of a, an airplane theme decoration on it? Uh, yeah, I decided to go with airplane theme on this pinball machine just because I thought it would be popular for all of the kids who walk by. Um, and so far, I've had some good comments about the airplane theme, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Great work on these. Now. I look forward to seeing more modules from you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll step, step back in here and continue on. Some of my modules here, uh, Akiyuki uh, Grab and Lift, which uh, I just sort of built myself. Um, a sweeper stepper, which just seems to be a, a common one there, but this one's taken about three revisions to get working smoothly. Um, I got a little bit too greedy. Sometimes I'll build a ball contraption, I want to make it bigger, and I'll make modifications to it. Then all of a sudden that alters the whole dynamics of how the uh, the system works. Luckily it's been quite smooth now, and having the, the swing arms a bit alternating actually makes it look quite interesting, I think. Um, going up to a basic conveyor, which then fills the hopper of my large truck dumper. So this was a, another big creative one that I built a couple of years ago. So this will fill up the hopper there. The truck is running on a chain loop at the back with a bit of a pause behind it as it loops down, dumps the balls and then goes back for more. So it's got the whole, you built kind of the whole city front and then it's like the, the yeah. truck is running on top there. Well the other way around of course, I built the main loop right. at the back first and then decided well what am I going to do and I, I kind of got this truck in a bulk lot uh, cheap and I figured well it looks like a good use of GBC. Uh, funny, you're always making improvements to it. This little um, uh, door at the back because balls would often drop in and spill straight back out. So I had to put a little door only about two days ago and it's actually worked really, really well. I experimented with different types of padding, a bit of foam in there or something to absorb the impact because balls would just hit and go running out there. But this is another module that I actually designed to have to cope with the spills. It doesn't matter if balls fill down the back there because it's all tiled and it funnels, channels the balls out to the back. So it can cope with uh, spills you can see a random mishmash of rainbow bricks behind. But it doesn't matter. You can actually throw a handful of balls down into the mechanism and it doesn't care. And that's what um, I've learnt is a really good thing to have in modules. Is that yes, if they can't cope with it, if, if, if they don't spill, great. But if they do spill, at least make it, the spills manageable. Leading on to a uh, basic ball pump here. Nico 71 design, I believe. Uh, and then onto a roller coaster. Unfortunately, Matt... Uh, <laughs> Norman, great ball pit. Your uh, upslide has jammed once too many times. It's such uh, a pretty module too. I, I, we had so many leftover friends bits and I thought I'd really decorate it. And it has been running well for about a day or so. Uh, just the gears at, at the bottom end up jamming up. So I'll, I'll get it working again. It's got potential. It's a great module. It's good fun to build, um, but just needs a bit more work. Uh, I work in schools and I, uh, some of my schools I've got access to uh, the older educational Duplo sets. So I managed to uh, build a Duplo module which mostly works. These are all original Duplo Lego gears, uh, mostly seen in schools for teaching uh, uh, elementary, uh, primary school kids um, how to use gears and mechanisms. And just a simple stepper here, which most of the time works pretty well. So what, what would you say are some of the, the differences in building at this large Duplo scale versus kind of your average GBC module? The funny thing, uh, uh, having to use tiles of course to interface with it, but really this was actually quite easy to build with and the, the whole uh, module was built in about half an hour. It's actually very quick and easy to prototype with. You can change parts around, get the gears working, um, but it's not 
that much different from working with normal Technic. It's just bigger. You've just got bigger pieces, and we've got, again, the worm gear and um, sort of the very, to, to most, I suppose, normal people, uh, Lego builders, very strange parts because you don't see these. These were never sold retail. They were only in the educational system. But it's standard Duplo, and it all goes together. Leading into an Archimedes screwed made of uh, upside-down arches, which has been done before, and to my tower, back, I guess, where we started filming. Uh, this one, again, has done a couple of years' worth of work. It's modular, it packs down, um, and generally works pretty well. So that's it of our layout here. I hope you've enjoyed seeing it around, and um, it's been good showing it off. Yeah, it's a fantastic layout. I think all of you guys have done such, a, such an amazing job here making it all work and I, I love seeing big GBC layouts like this and uh, the teamwork that it takes to run it I think yeah. captures so much of what's great about the Lego community and Lego in general yeah. the creativity and working together. So with the community I think you're, you're absolutely right about community and we should give credit to people like Akiyuki, uh, Mako Arts and Tom, even Tom Atkinson. Uh, honestly I started watching your video with Tom Atkinson but also Akiyuki um, a lot of people, and you'll see in here and other layouts, have copied his modules. And uh, for a while, people were just reverse engineering his instructions, and that's totally fine. He's also released a lot of instructions, but now he's actually selling his instructions. So if anyone wants to get into GBC, I would say go to Akiyuki's website. You can obviously uh, Google him um, and, and have a look. He, the, their instructions are, I think, about five Australian dollars. I don't know what that is in other currencies. Uh, but it's a great way to start with quite an uh, uh, interesting module if you're interested in starting. Uh, also, uh, the Australian uh, community has its own uh, website uh, that, that Graeme uh, Catter here is um, uh, working on too. Um, get into Facebook groups, get onto YouTube channels, start, sh start Googling uh, and find other people in your local community um, um, around, and from around the world and locally. So, yeah, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the Australian GBC database, if, if, if you are an Australian wanting to, to get into GBC, go to uh, AUSGBC, that's AUSGBC.org. Uh, we've, we've actually got some, uh, some QR codes here that you can, uh, you can sort of scan with your phone. And, uh, and, and, and that not only gives a, a, a database of, of what events of uh, GBCs have been at and, uh, and what modules were there, but it, it, also, it also gives you a bit of a profile of some of the builders. Um, there'll be, uh, there'll be a, a, a place that, uh, that you can download instructions. Uh, that's, that's all to come. But, uh, but, but it, it also, it's also a tool for helping us plan uh, future events so that you can say, okay, well, I'm going along to BrickVention 2020. Uh, here's, a, here's a list of the, uh, the, the modules that, uh, that are expected to be there. Here's a list of the, uh, the, the modules that you've said that you've built that, uh, that, are, that are working. Which ones are you taking? Tick, 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 tick. Do it all online. And, and, it, and it just helps us as the, as the organisers to, to know how many modules, what, what sort of mechanisms, what, uh, uh, which, which modules uh, are going to be temperamental so that we can, we can sort of strategically place them in places where they can be looked after. So. so yeah, we'll make sure to put links in the description for everyone watching to the Australian website and then also the Akiyuki information as well so that uh, people can find that more there and get more inspiration because there are a lot of great resources out there for people if you're... Uh, I think uh, you forgot to mention uh, Planet GBC which is where almost all the instructions are oh, collected Planet, as Planet well. GBC. Planet GBC is one of the good stuff. Like it's actually got um, like them categorized like easy to build, medium and hard like kind of like uh, categorization in there as well. Um, also, I just wanted to uh, show you some of the tools that yeah. we have. So, like, this has uh, been evolving for a while. So, this, has, uh, this is my latest evolving version of it, which has actually got the ball really. So, this is used to, like, pick up the balls, uh, like, especially in very, like, crude, like, hard-to-reach areas. Um, and was like, invention, was it? Or was it yours? Uh, yeah, so he started that <laughs> earlier, but he had the four uh, pronged ones, and then uh, that's my improvement, which has got the ball release in there as well. So I've I've got some instructions um, designed on it, so I'll probably put it up on some of the websites. These are the um, tools of the trade for a GBC. These are the trade. Um, yeah. So these stick. these are called pokey sticks, and you also got these ones so that you can like drag them off in like when you get get them underneath. So the really, really, really yeah. And then the cups uh, that we carry around, like so. Everywhere there's a jam, you just pop in a box, get the, the bypass going, um, and then you can just work on it and then pass the balls manually uh, while you fix the things in there. So a um, lot of tools and trades that we have got in, um, like uh, figured out over the years. Um, they come in really handy when you uh, have got uh, two days of, uh, two to three days of running things um, continuously. So this is my seventh year. 
Um, so I started just by myself, did it uh, two years just with my, me and my kids who were really small at the time. Um, just got myself uh, involved with uh, uh, the community. Um, third year, I got someone who was crazy enough to just do another GBC part, but we didn't have the modules um, in a way they could be connected. And then at least at the end, on the fourth year, we finally got uh, enough people to um, build things. And after that, it just um, like took off. Uh, so this year, uh, we have people coming in from five different states in Australia. So we got um, Alan coming in from uh, Brisbane. Uh, we got um, Kader coming in from New South Wales with his kids. Uh, and then uh, we have got a bunch of uh, people. So Rowan uh, and a couple of others. Um, uh, including myself, James and uh, Paco, um, all coming from uh, Melbourne. And we've got um, uh, one of the uh, James, they've got two James. Uh, one is coming from Adelaide and the uh, other one is coming from uh, Canberra. So, and we've got a couple of modules which are actually coming from a builder in Canberra who is not in this year, but he has been, um, he's, he was the one who uh, started me with me on the third year. Yeah. So you've got contributors from all over Australia yeah, then? So you've got a whole, um, like we haven't, uh, like we can say, just say the east coast of uh, uh, Australia, Not we haven't gone to the west yet. Um, we hope that we'll eventually get the Northern Territory and the Western Australia joining in. So there's only, and Tasmania. Tasmania has already got some GBCs there. Um, so there's only three states that need to join in. Um, so eventually we will be getting in there. <laughs> well, thank you for the background. That's good to know kind of how it's evolved over the years. Keep spreading the word. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, this has been really fantastic. Thank you, everyone, who helped show us around the GBC, and I hope everyone enjoys watching. And again, if you're ever interested in building GBC, make sure to check out the resources in the description. It's a lot of fun. It's work, but it's a lot of fun as well. So I think you'll definitely enjoy it. Thanks for watching.